Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at the centrifugal type pump and we're going to learn how it works. Now the centrifugal type pump is the most common type of pump used in industry and pretty much every commercial and industrial building, many of our homes, houses and apartments, even ships and aircraft, they'll all have at least one centrifugal pump installed. It's actually pretty rare to come across a building that doesn't have one installed. Now, larger sites, especially uh, commercial and industrial buildings, um, they're most likely going to have multiple sets of pumps, and this is to serve the different systems they have within the building. So typically, you know, heating and cooling systems or anything really where water needs to be pushed around some pipe work throughout the building or the process. So if you're in engineering or you're looking to get into this, you're going to come across these very often. They're absolutely everywhere. Now in a typical setup, an induction motor is mounted at the back. A shaft is then run between the rotor of the motor over into the pump and the impeller is then mounted to the shaft. The induction motor rotates the shaft which in turn rotates the impeller. Changing the speed of the motor will change the speed of the impeller's rotation. And in this method you can then change the flow rate of the system. The impeller then sits inside the pump casing where it's completely sealed in you shouldn't be able to look inside it or any of its components. So the centrifugal pump has two ports an inlet and also an outlet. The inlet is always through the center usually on a horizontal axis like this whereas the exit is on the vertical axis. So this is known as the suction line and this is known as the discharge line. The impeller, where it's sitting inside the pump casing, this should always be submerged in water, otherwise it will not be able to draw sufficient flow and operate correctly. This can cause cavitation where the water inside actually starts to boil due to the low pressure and this can cause severe damage to the pump's impellers. The pump casing has a volute running around the circumference of the pump casing. The volute, which is sitting on the outside of the casing here, has an increasing diameter all the way from the start, the inside, innermost of the pump, all the way around up into the discharge, or the outlet. This change in diameter allows more water to flow, and obviously that means an increase in the mass flow rate as it comes around and all the flow starts to build up. The water, or fluid, starts to enter into the pump through the inlet port. As the water enters into the impeller, the force of it pushes this out towards the edge. All the water that is pushed against the edge is then collecting into the volute, and you can see as it's all here collecting and making its way out through the top. The impeller has these veins, these curved shapes here, and they run from the center all the way out to the outer edge. This type of impeller is known as the backwards curve type impeller, which is the most common and most efficient design for moving water. It's important to remember that these veins do not push the water out like a paddle. The water actually flows in between these and uh, the veins help provide a force, the centrifugal force, which forces that water out of the pump. To understand how this works, let's have a look at the impeller. Now when the impeller begins to spin, it creates a low pressure suction at the inlet, this part here. This low pressure suction pulls the fluid into the center of the impeller. And we know that when you spin something, it always tries to move away from the center, away over to the outer edge. So we have this outward force here, which shows by this line, we also know that the item will have inertia. So we can show that with this line here. So that as this rotates, it's going to try and keep going out following its radial force. These forces combined give you a resultant force. And this resultant force shows that the fluid will exit the impeller following a spiral trajectory. So the volute is therefore shaped to match this and direct the fluid. As the water collects in the volute, it slows down and this converts its kinetic energy into static pressure. The water continues to flow in behind this 
and this is what pushes the water, allowing it to maintain pressure and, and, and it's, as well as its flow rate. And this allows water to be pushed through pipes all the way around the building. And that is why they are used throughout buildings and systems all around the world. Now this is the inside of a pump casing. You can see the inside of the volute there as it's increasing and going up towards the discharge port. I'll just put my hand there so you can see that's where it would come out. And this is the view just in through the top there so you can see how it would channel out. This is inside the impeller. You can see the blades here and uh, you can just turn, rotate that by hand. Don't worry, it's not connected to anything. I'm not going to cut my hands off. It just rotates like so. And this just shows you looking inside the pump. This is just a stock one laying on the shelf. You can see the impeller in there and also a flow arrow indicating the direction of flow. Now this is just the shaft along with the rotor uh, attached and this would fit inside the induction motor. Now this, this is looking inside the induction motor so the rotor would sit in here and the shaft would come out of here. That shaft would then connect onto the impeller as shown here. And that impeller would then sit inside here and be bolted onto it. And obviously you can see the volute here with the increasing diameter running around the circumference of the pump casing. The pumps might, might not always be direct drive for a shaft. They could also be on a belt drive like this. There's another view of it there. Um, this is less energy efficient because you'll get some, some slip and uh, some frictional losses here from, from these belts. So if you can use direct drive, they're much more efficient. They're also uh, using direct drive is also far less maintenance involved. And these pumps will uh, they'll keep running for, for many years, actually. They're a real workhorse of the industry. But anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has helped. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to check out our website, theengineeringmindset.com. Thanks for watching.